So now what I want to do is talk about clone painting. Um, we're not going to do an auto painting yet. This is just how to set up to clone an image, meaning to have an image that you want to add brush strokes to based off of what the original image was. So we're going to do File. You can do New to start a new canvas, but since we are wanting to have a um, image that we're painting from, I'm going to do, you could do open. I'm going to do recent because I had her, this one pulled up a minute ago. So I'm going to do this. The missing color profile, it's not missing, it's there. It's just that it's called something else. I have an, I work with the WRGB, so okay. Now, if you ever need to change your color settings, you can go under canvas, color management settings, um, this is all it, color management settings, assign profile, convert to profile. Those are the same that Photoshop has under, um, I think it's file. And I think they're called the same. It's either file under file or edit. And it's called the same things in Photoshop. So once you have your image pulled up, this one is needs to, we need to rotate the canvas. So canvas, rotate canvas by um, counterclockwise 90 degrees. And it makes her nice. But I know that this file is going to be too big. Um, older versions, when I first started out on um, Painter, there were uh, shutting down issues when I would be working on an image. This has been a, six or seven years ago. I can't remember. It might have been um, Corel X. I can't remember which one it was. But anyway, so the older versions, there were if you were working on a large file, there were crash problems. They have since worked everything out. out. I've had no problems since then, but I just want to let you know, you're going to want to resize. That way your performance, it's going to run quicker. Your brush strokes are going to go along with you. So you get a canvas, resize canvas, and you're going to want it to be, um, I would say no, don't go, when you're working on an image, I wouldn't work it work on an image larger than a 16 by 20. I'm just going to work on this as an 8 by 12 because I know that I can make it larger later if I want to without losing my details. So I'm going to tell it to be an 8 by 12. Whoa. And then I'm going to change it to 300. Um, so it's an 8 by 12 at 300 pix pixels per inch and it changes it. Control O and I am working on a PC, I think it's Commando in, um, or Zero, Control Zero or Command Zero to bring it up to its full size. A lot of the uh, short um, shortcut keys are the same. Some are different, but, but just by a little bit as what they are in Photoshop. So I have this beautiful image up. I know it's the right size. I um, It's turned the right way. But, you know, when I go to paint it, of course, I'm not going to want any of this back background information in it, etc. So that I'm going to get rid of all that, but I'm going to show you how to start a clone painting based off of this image. There are two ways you can do this. I could open up a, a new canvas that's blank and I could tell it that this is my clone source. We're not going to get into that one yet. I'm going to let painting to start clone painting. Under File, Quick, clone. If I click on this, you're going to see that it's going to go through. It's going to set this image to be um, transparent where we can toggle on and off to see it as tracing paper. Um, and it's going to get rid of the original so that we don't save over it. So I'm going to say quick clone. Okay, so now look, I've got a blanket. What happened to my image? Where'd it go? Well, if you look up here on the menu bar, it says clone source, and there she is. Or if you look over here, if you still have your clone source um, palette drawer open, then you'll see right there she is. Okay, and we could open up several things to clone from, but right now I'm starting you out very basic. So we have that image there. Now, this is the canvas. As you can see, nothing's on there. We're going to add another layer. I do not like to paint on my canvas. I always like to paint on different layers. So there's a blank layer. It's going to be pulling up 
um, my underlying color. And if you hit Control T or Command T, you will see it's like, you don't see it over here, but it's over here. It's tracing paper and it's showing you what you're using. So if I wanted to grab a pencil and I would go under my pens and pencils, if I wanted to grab a 2B pencil and just trace her, I would make sure I'm on a layer. I would have my pencil. I would choose the color of my pencil and then I could start tracing her. Okay, so this is one, one thing, way to do this. And we could have an outline in this way. I would know basically where everything is located on her. And then if I want to go back later, this is just rough. You can make it as perfect as you want, okay? There. So when I start um, clone painting here in a moment, I'll know about where things are located. I don't do this with all of them. This is just me giving you some options. Okay, so there's the lovely girl. We know the flowers go to about here. I'm doing this so that when I start clone painting, I know about where my limits are. So, now, when I, if you look over here, this is a rubber stamp, and it's set right now, it has color. See the color? That means that I can choose these colors over here and write. So if I chose yellow, if I chose this greeny yellow, there, it's going to do it in that color. Control Z or Command Z is undo last step. So if you um, add something and you don't want it hit control or command Z and it gets rid of it. So, but what I was saying is this stamp, okay, this is the color. But if I want to clone on this layer based off of the color that she is, I click the rubber stamp and now it's in gray. What does that mean? That means it's going to pull whatever color here is under here and make my marks that color. So that's the flower. You can see it's that coral color. So if it was a bigger pencil, that's the pencil mark of the color that is underlying. Okay. So this is how you clone paint. You use a, the, you make sure that the brush is on clone color, which is when you click on the rubber stamp and it's gray over here. So to start painting, I'm going to add another layer. I'm actually going to click on this and I'm going to name it um, outline. And I'm going to move it to the very top. Eventually, what I'll do is I'll either take it and make it um, make it uh, the opacity of that layer really light so I don't see it anymore or I might just get rid of it most likely I'm going to just get rid of it altogether okay so when you're clone painting you're going to go grab your brush and I want you to only use um, start out and only use brushes from one category at a time. Uh, that way you can get to know that, that category, those brushes, and it will help you along your, your way because you'll get very overwhelmed if you try to fix in, and use all the brushes. So I'm going to use, a let's see, this medium bristle oils. I have it on, um, I'm going to choose clone. I'm going to reset my brush first and then I'm going to choose clone and then I'm going to make it a little bit bigger and I am just going to add whatever color is out here. It is again pulling the color from underneath. This was her, her hair. There is the um, outfit. Her hands were right here. Neck. 
And I do this underlying, this is what I call my underpainting, and I do this very inefficient, fast, <laughs> um, just so that I can get and, and see where my color is. This brush is absolutely not my favorite, um, but this is going to help me. Now, when you do, whenever you're painting a face, you paint within the contour and lines of the face so um, that you don't have brush strokes that don't match the lines because it's it, it looks wrong your eyes tell you that it's not right I'm going to cut off the outline the outline was more just information for you all I can't use paint with them anymore they kind of disturb my eye. I know that she's looking. And when I work, I have my right hand with my stylus um, painting, and then on my, my left hand is on my keyboard um, my with my bracket keys so that I can change the size of the brush quick and on the fly while I'm painting if I need to. This is um, not a very good brush as an example, but I just grabbed it, so we're going to make it work. Okay, so now the next brush I'm going to use is the Real Clumpy Wet Flat. It's in the same category. It's, as you can see, it's, a, it's not round. It's um, oblong. And this is going to help me more with... Um, the contours of my face and I'm going to resize my brush up and down um, it's on clone paint I did I didn't hit my reset I should have but um, I know that I didn't make any changes because I just used it a minute ago so I should have hit reset then made sure it was on clone paint you can go into control T and look so that you know you're painting within the contours of um, the face, the neck, the details. This brush is probably too big to be doing this right through here. Um, but I like to start with the larger brush and get all the deep or the colors down. And then I start decreasing my brush size and, and getting more detailed. I am a realistic painter. I do love the details. That is something I thrive on. For the longest time, I thought I was not supposed to paint like that, and I sought out every single way I could possibly seek to not paint that way. And then finally, one day, a uh, very someone that I really respect as an artist told me, Marjorie, if that's what you enjoy, then that's where you need to be. So then I realized it was okay for me to be a detailed painter. So I just continued on. Now, you can see we're getting closer. This is kind of looks kind of cool, actually. Um, my smeary round. Uh, the details oil brush right here is what I use at the very end to, to like capture the nose and the mouth. And it just depends on how far I want to go into this. I'm trying to do this one pretty quickly, so I don't know how detailed I'm going to get. Um, just so that I can show you uh, how to do the quick clone. Smeary round, reset. I know I'm clone painting, so I need to hit my rubber stamp to turn it back. And then I si I'm going to size it, make it a little bit bigger. There we go. And we already have paint down. And the cool thing is this is working just like it would in oils. It's almost going to blend the colors the smeary round does and it's um, putting the colors together and it doesn't have like just such set and defined um, circles. Control T is what I just did on my PC um, so that I could see my um, tracing paper. Yeah, this is pulling together very well. Okay. 
use my bracket key to resize it and I should have used the sizer up at the top because again it kind of gives it a little bit of a hiccup as it's as it tries and it runs the fan on my processor I can hear it run hot I'm trying to just get in I'm lightly tapping here so that I can get the detail of where all this is I try not to zoom in too much but at the very end I will end up zooming in a lot so don't but I don't want to do it yet and when is a painting done it's done whenever you feel like it has accomplished um, what you want it to This is the part where I will zoom in. And you can see the brush marks. This is a, the smeary round is a really good, um, in the oils category, smeary round. Great brush for um, the skin. Not everyone's skin is perfect, there is marks. might just paint one half of her face so that I can get all this in one time. And I can paint, I paint organically and um, digitally so I pretty much can look at a messed up image and know exactly where the nose is and the mouth and um, that's why I don't hit the control T a whole lot um, to get things in. And it, when you first start out, you probably will. There's not a lot of contrast in this one on this side of the face. Once you get finished with your painting, you can always go back and add um, paint on top. And that's what we'll sh I'll show you real quick. And it's very important that you develop your own style and that people can look at your images and know that it was one of your images and not someone else's. Um, I get caught up sometimes in, it's, it's, it's good to look at the old masters and try to copy their style and, and even some of the current ones, but you always want to try and um, come up with your own signature, your own signature marks. And I will spend forever on an eyeball, and I'm probably already doing way too much for what I'm wanting. I know she has highlights. Once you finish painting, um, you can go in, and I'll show now. We'll, we'll come to a little bit of a stop here. You can add um, a layer. You can say, no more clone painting. You can grab a color by hitting your alt, get your grabber, get the color, or if you're on your brush, you can just hold down the alt key and it'll give you the color and then you can actually paint the color in on a different layer or you can paint it in on the layer, layer that you were clone painting. If I wanted her eyes to be more blue, Catch light. Yeah. I could add a um, highlight right here. If, if the highlight is already this color right here, I might go up a little bit more, add a stroke. Same thing on the lips. This is really rough, really quick. Um, but I, just to show you, clone painting. 
and then you finish it off the way you want to. You might end up using different brushes, but this is going to get you started on a clone painting. Um, what you do is you open up a file, resize it, then you do file, quick clone, do your magic. I always like to have everything on different layers. When Now I want to um, discuss the saving. You will do file, save as, and when it, it's, as you can see, it says untitled, and that's because it set up a brand new file for you so that you wouldn't save over the original document. So we'll call this um, example and then save it as a painter riff file. Why do you want to do that? Because it's going to save your clone source. So you could, if you save it as a painter riff file, you can close it out. And I'm going to close her. We're not using her anymore. I did modify her, but I don't want to save those changes. So. If I open up what I was just working on, recent example, it brings it back up, and right there it still has her saved as my clone source so I can continue painting on and finishing the, doc, um, the portrait. You can drop all the layers, collapse, or is it drop? That's to the canvas, I'm sorry. This outline I didn't use, I, that was just me showing you, so I'm going to delete that. Control E combine, um, puts the layers together just like it does in uh, Photoshop or Command E. And then what you can do is File, Save As. This is if you want it to be a JPEG. So I already have the RIF file saved with all the, the layers. Now I'm going to save my JPEG. And then I could pull it into um, anything I wanted to. Now I want to show you one thing really quick. And you can see the brushed textures. Oh, If you um, are using a brush that ha will pull paper textures, um, that's when you get to choose paper texture and tell the brush how it is controlled on the paper texture. For instance, chalk. Show you. You could use the chalk on here as a highlight or a shadow. And actually, chalk works really well in um, shadow. And I'll use the blunt hard pastel. And right here is the paper grain texture. I'm going to choose a nubby laid paper. And if I wanted to make her cheeks a little bit more rosy, I could do that. And you see how it pulls the texture of the paper. So that's an option on um, some of those that have, that interact and can use texture. But if you don't have that availability within a brush and you want there to be more paper looking texture, that is when I'm going to this cream canvas and I'm going to say control A to select it and control C to copy it. And then I'm going back to the girl I'm working on and I'm going to add a layer, put the paper down. Oh, I didn't have to add a layer, but anyway, so I'm putting the paper down and I'm going to change the um, blending mode or the composite method to multiply. And then you can see that the paper texture is in there and you can change the, um, the opacity of what the paper would be over top of it. And that makes it look a little bit more painterly. So it just depends upon what, what the look is and even where the white is, where it wasn't finished. So it just depends on... Um, the look that you're trying to accomplish. But this should get you started on clone painting that style of the quick clone. And we'll go into more of the auto painting and other ways of clone painting here soon. That'll be in the next couple videos.